especially during these tough times. Amen. Um, I'm sure um, a lot of you, if not everyone, are following the news, right? Could be the international news, Macau news, or the news in your home countries. And uh, I'm sure, you know, it, it brings some kind of, um, some kind of fears and uncertainties to our hearts. Right? I would not lie if I say, I would not lie that somehow it didn't affect me. It did. It, it has affected us. Me and, and I'm sure every one of us has been affected in different ways. Amen. So therefore, in this new series that we are going to start, entitled and Deserve, I think this is the, the best time to talk about and be reminded and be assured of the grace of God. Yeah. That God is still in control, like what Bell's mentioned, er, Bell mentioned earlier, that God is still in His throne and is in control of everything that is happening around us. Yep. Amen. I was just reminded of Job chapter 11 that says, who can, who can fathom the mind of God? Who can fathom, who can, who can probe His majesty? His mind is higher than the highest heaven. What do we know? It says there, His mind is, highest, is higher than the highest heaven. What do we know? What do we know? We will just trust Him because we know that He is faithful in His promises. Amen. 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 Now, um, like I said, this is the, the right time. Like I said, this is the right time, the best time, to talk about the grace of God. The grace of God. Now, uh, in this series, we will be talking about sufficient grace, sufficient grace, sanctifying grace, this is a five-week series. Third week will be enriching grace, justifying grace, and inviting grace. Amen. Now, I would like to, before I, I start uh, to read this verse, this passage, I'd like to give you the context. Uh, in, in verse 1 of chapter 12, uh, Paul was mentioning about a man who had seen the majesty of God when he was caught up to the third heaven. And most scholars agreed that this person that Paul was talking about was himself. But therefore, when, when Paul has this experience of seeing God, His majesty, even he was caught up to the third heaven, he has all right to boast. But look at what he all mentioned in chapters in verse 7. He said, because of this surprisingly great revelation that he experienced, therefore in order to keep me from becoming conceited, how many understand when you experience God, sometimes you have this, sometimes you can be conceited and feel that you know, we can do things, great, great things, and sometimes without the need of God you feel, right? It was given, I was given a thorn in my flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me. Three times I pleaded with the Lord take, uh, to take it away from me, but he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness, therefore I will boast all the more gladly about my weakness so that Christ's power may rest on me. And verse 10, that is why for Christ's sake I delight in weaknesses, in, in insult, in hardship, in persecution, in difficulties, for when I am weak, then I am strong. Let us, let us pray. Father, we thank you for this morning, Lord. Lord, I just pray. My only prayer, Lord God, that we may all understand, Lord God, the sufficiency of your grace, Lord God. Even in this, in this situation that we are all in, Lord God, that the whole world is in. Lord, we pray, Lord God, that we see what you have been doing, Lord God, what you have been done, what you have been doing, Lord God, even, even now, Lord God. Lord, we understand that sometimes there's an unseen grace, Lord God, but I pray that we will see with our eyes, Lord God, how you move, Lord God, in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's talk about Paul for a while. You know, Paul, if there's a person who would, who we could say that has a journey or has a progression in understanding grace, it is him. It, is, it was Paul. 
We understand that Paul was previously a, a Jewish scholar. He was knowledgeable in the, in the, in, in the, in the Jewish law, in the Torah. So basically, even in Philippians, he mentioned that if anyone thinks he has the reason to put confidence in flesh, I have more. He said, I was, I was um, a circumcised in the seventh days. Uh, in the seventh day, I was the Jew. I was the uh, I was a Jew of the Jews. I have obeyed all the laws. He said, you know, he said before before he became a Christian, he has all this, you know, um, arrogance in terms of his holiness, his own own his his own and so called holiness. But then he progresses. He said, for I am the least of the apostles. And do not even deserve to be called apostles. Some, somehow Paul became more humble. And in Ephesians, he says, Although I am less than the least of all God's people, this grace has given, given me. I am, the, the, I am less than the least of all God's people. And then in the end, he said, when he was matured already, writing to Timothy, he said, Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am worse. You see the progression of all. You see, sometimes, you know, whenever one's in our journey towards maturity in knowing Christ, we see more and more that we are dependent upon His grace. Amen. We see more and more that it's not about us, not about our skill, not about, uh, not about our intelligence, not about our good looks, not about what we have in our bank, not about what work what we are, uh, that we are doing. It's really about the grace of God. From beginning to end, it's about His grace. And that is what Paul understood in his journey. That in the end, when he was matured, writing to Timothy, he said, I am worse of the sinners. You see, in part of his journey, in this passage that we have just read, when he said, because, there's, because of this surpassingly great revelation, therefore in order to keep me from becoming conceited, he said, I was given a thorn in the flesh. Now many scholars are discussing about this. There are many opinions. They said, some of them, they, they said it's sickness. Some of them, this is, uh, this is um, like, um, uh, what they call that? Some of them it's called uh, it's 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 um, being uh, his experience, the persecution that he's, that he's experiencing, the trials. You know, but but let's let's assume for for a while that it's about the trial that he experienced. Remember what Paul mentioned in in verse in chapter eleven of Second Corinthians that he experienced. You know, countless imprisonment. You see what Paul experienced? He experienced countless, you know, countless imprisonment. Five times he said, I was flogged. Forty lashes plus one. Five times, can you imagine that? Five times he was flogged for the sake of Christ. He was imprisoned countless times. He was beaten three times by rod. How many of us would like to experience that? No one, right? And he said, I was shipwrecked. And I was persecuted many, many times. Yeah. Every day he was experiencing trouble, hardship, difficulties in life. Every single day, every single moment because he was serving Christ. Can you imagine that? That's why Paul was been praying, Lord. You know, he said, a messenger said that to torment me. Three times I pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me. Can you just imagine that? I'm sure. I'm sure Paul would do that, right? If, if we were in the shoes of Paul, definitely we would pray hard to the Lord. Lord, please, Lord, please, can you remove this from me? Can you remove this, this thorn, this difficulty, this, this hardship from me? And that's exactly what we've been through right now. If, even though it is not as... It's not as worse as what Paul has experienced, but now we are, we are in difficulty right now. Amen. Amen. We were in the hardship right now. I'm sure. I can understand you. I was just reading 
we, we have seen in the news, New York Times just said, we are now, the economy, the world economy is now going to the uncharted territory, you know, of recession that has never been experienced. Macau revenue goes down with by 95%. This has never been experienced. A lot of unemployment, salary cut, unpaid leave. I'm sure, I know that I know most of us has, you know, is experiencing this, if not all. But I'm sure, in one way or another, we have some difficulties because of this situation. Amen. Amen. Even in our, even with our family back at back home, yes. it's hard for them to get groceries yes. because you need a car to go out. And only one person is allowed. Grocery store, you know, is closed by 7 p.m. And sometimes some of, some of them are only open by three, in three hours and they have to line up, they have to queue up in the grocery store. There are difficulties. Some of them, they cannot work. Those who are earning every day, they cannot work. How they can eat? Amen. In my hometown, I heard that there's already two ex infected and one of them died already in my own hometown. This is the magnitude of what we are experiencing. And just like what Paul, we are in this now together, praying, Lord, just like what Paul pleaded three times, Lord, can you stop this? It's the same way we are pleading, Lord, can you please stop this? But the Lord said, my grace is sufficient for you. Amen. For my power is made perfect in weaknesses. Therefore I will be, therefore Paul said, therefore I will boast all the more glad about my weaknesses. So Christ's power may rest on me. Weakness. Weakness means infirmities. Moral, mental, physical weakness or flaw. Utter helplessness against pride, insult, reproaches, and hurt. Utter helplessness. When you say utter helplessness, you cannot really do anything. And you realize that. This is beyond us, church. Even this coronavirus, so-called coronavirus, is beyond us. It's beyond human's ability. But praise God, we have a crown that is sufficient. That is more powerful than any other crown in this world. Amen. Utter helplessness. I took this picture. Sometimes we didn't, I, I, we didn't realize how tall is, is Macau Tower. Macau Tower is. And I took this picture when, I, when we were in Macau Tower and I took a picture from, from below. It was really, really high. And I realized that even about the grace of God, if we want to see how high and big the grace of God, we must view it from below. You know what I mean? We must below, we must view the grace of God from below. That means humility, church. That means humility. That, we, that means we need to accept, Lord, this, you are all that we need. Yes, some of us maybe, we have still have some savings, yes. But that should not give us confidence yeah. in this situation. Yes. It is always the grace of God that should give us confidence. Let's talk about the grace of God. Grace of God is, could be this thing at times. Unseen. <clears throat> at times, it unseen, but it's always sufficient. You know what I mean? Sometimes grace is very distinct. We can always see, oh, this is, thank you Lord for what you are doing or what you have done. But how many of you understand that sometimes God is working without us realizing it? Amen? We have to trust Him. God is always working, the Bible says. Jesus said, my Father is always working. So we can be assured that God is working on something, He's planning on something about this situation. Though sometimes we do not see but we have to trust Him. 
it is always sufficient whether we see it or not, either whether we feel it or not, it is always sufficient. Sufficient to give us faith to face fears. Number one. Point number one, sufficient. The, the grace of God is sufficient to give faith to face fears. I like what Pastor Stephen said. Our prayer that this health and financial crisis will not turn into what? Faith crisis. We will have all financial crisis, health crisis. We are all uncertain. We do not know what, what's going to happen next, next day, next year. Amen. We do not know if we still have a job. But I pray, our prayer is that this crisis will not be faith crisis. Psalm chapter 34 said, I pray to the Lord and He answered me. He freed me from all fears. Now church, I'd like to understand this. Fear is normal. Let us not downplay that this situation is nothing. Sometimes, sometimes I hear people that, down, that they are not playing this. They say, it's just, it's just a virus, you know, just, just a virus. It's nothing. No, we, fear is real. But do you know what's the benefit of accepting fear? Because it will bring us to our knees. And cry out to God. You know, sometimes, if, sometimes if we do not realize that there's fear, it's either we are we are arrogant or we are naive. You know, yes. it's either we are naive, we don't know what's happening, or we are arrogant. We think that we can overcome everything. But yes, I can. I'd like to tell you, it's okay to have fear because all that's when that's when the time we cry out to God. And he will, give, he will give us His peace. I'm not saying we will live in fear. But definitely, we, if we accept the fear, then we will call on to God and He will give us His peace. Amen. And I'm sure we, have, we, we understand that. Sometimes, we, sometimes we, we, were, we will shake it a little bit. And then we cry out to God. And suddenly, there's a peace that transcends all understanding that we feel. That's exactly the purpose of you know, that's exactly what I'm saying, that we will see how great, how high the grace of God if we view it from below. We have to accept that we are, we are nothing and we cannot do anything in order to see how high, how great His love and grace and mercy. Amen. Psalm 34 said, I prayed. That's, what we can, that's, that's the thing that we can do. We pray. And once you pray, God, it says, He prayed, He freed me from all my fears. Those who look to Him for help will be radiant with joy. Amen. How you can still smile, even this, despite of this, this situation. Amen. Amen. How, how many of you can, can still feel the joy of the Lord, even with this situation? Amen. Amen. We can still sing. We can still praise God. We can still worship the Lord. We, we, in, fact, in fact, we are still here worshiping the Lord together. Amen. Some of us are still doing victory, uh, victory group. And still praising God and giving our own testimonies. Why? Because of the joy of the Lord that He has given us. Despite of the situation. Yeah. No shadow of shame will be darkened. Will darken their faces. That's the promise of God. Isaiah 34, 4, say to those who say to those with fearful hearts, this is what the Lord says, be strong, do not fear, your God will come. How do you believe that? Our God will come in His time. He will come to our rescue. Where our help comes from, our help comes from the Lord. Amen. Amen. I'm excited for that. That God will turn things around. That God, that that um, that later on, that soon we will see. Wow, Lord, this is your, this is that this is actually your plan all along. How are you excited about that? You know, God has a plan. We do not know yet, but we should be excited. You know, looking back and saying, Lord, we didn't know that this was your plan all along. Amen. 
Are we excited? Can we? Let's be excited. Come on. <clears throat> Number two, sufficient to give wisdom to face trials. We need wisdom. We need wisdom. It says in James chapter 1, if any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God, who gives wisdom, who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to us. Or to you. you know, a lot of times, we, we consume a lot of different news from different media, media right? Or media, like James social media, James like proper news channels. Yes. But a lot of times, it's really hard to, to know which one is fake and which is not. And, and it causes trouble to us unnecessarily. Amen. And I just remember a few weeks ago or last week, right? Um, in the Philippines, there was a fake news banana can cure <laughs> coronavirus. And then suddenly the price of the banana of bananas right. went up because everyone wanted to buy banana. Right? You know, I was I realized yesterday that not all information when you lack some when you lack information, it is not always necessary to consume more information. You know what I mean? Um, yesterday, I when I was doing my, my preaching, I suffered with gastric or my, with, with my uh, acid reflux. And it was so, so painful. My wife knows it. And then I, I searched from, the, from Google how can I have a relief, very quick relief. And, Take this, take that, do that, do that. I, I did everything. And it didn't work. And my wife gave me a... So, uh, 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 what did I do? Baking soda. Uh, I, I took um, lemon water. Uh, everything. I tried. It says there in, the, in Google, do not sit down, do not, do not lie down, stand up. So I stood up while doing a preaching. It didn't work. And then my wife found the, the medicine that was prescribed by the doctor. And just one take of it, in a few minutes, I, I was good. Praise God, you know. What I realized, I said, Lord, what's your message here? And, then the said, and I realized that sometimes it's not always taking more and more information, but taking the right information. Amen. Hey, what, what, not... Not everything we see in social media is helpful, even if it's if it's if, even if you think this is some sort of godly, uh, godly message or godly information. But actually, just rely on the word of God. Rely on the word of God or some of our leaders, right? Pastor Steve is uh, regularly uh, giving his update, right? Uh, and some other pastors, Pastor Gio is doing also some. Uh, <laughs> so one thing. So what I'm trying to say is select what we consume. Even information. Pastor Steve said facts plus faith equals wise decision. This is always combined faith with facts in order to for us to have wisdom. Say not, Ecclesiastes 7 10, say not. Why were the former days better than this? For it is from wisdom that you ask. For it is not from wisdom that you ask this. You know, sometimes we ask. You know, the the, the old days. You know, before was okay. Before was better. I like to. I, I like the old days before. I like the things that's, that's, that were happening before this all this coronavirus. You know what? I think it's better for us to be more. To be more expectant to God of what He's going yeah. to do, rather than looking back and saying, "It's better before." You know, the economy was better before. Uh, my finances were better before. Yeah. All these things. You know, instead of looking back and regret, let's just look forward and be expectant of yeah. what God is doing. The Bible says, "Why were you the former this better than this?" And the Bible says, "For it is not from wisdom that you ask this." Meaning the Lord wants us to look forward. 
and be expected. You know, there are things that that there are good things that comes out from this situation. You know, some people they were they were terminated from the job because of redundancy, went, but went back to the Philippines and then you know they realized they have this opportunity of business opportunity, right? Some people were stuck back in the Philippines because of uh, uh, lockdown, but they were able, they were able to enjoy their family yeah. for a while. Yes. Yeah. You know what I mean? There are always good things in whatever is happening. With the grace of God. Yeah. And lastly, last point, sufficient to give hope to face the future. He's what I'm saying. We must always look forward. Lord, what is what is or what is in store for us? Proverbs 23, 18, there is surely a future hope for you. And your hope will not be cut off. This is the promise of the Lord. Our hope will not be cut off. Job 11, 16 to 18, you will surely forget your trouble, recalling it only as waters gone by. Life will be brighter than noonday, and darkness will become like morning. You will be secure because there is hope. Amen. You will look about. Uh, you will look about you and take uh, take your rest in safety. Now, we as Christians, you should be the channel of hope to other people. Let's be careful on what we are going to say and what we are uttering in front of others. In front of others. We should be the child, we should be the source of hope which is from the Lord. Um, one of our Victory Group members were telling me, last, uh, telling us last time, that a colleague of his asked him, how about you Christians? What is your, what is your hope uh, in, this, in, this, uh, in, this, in this thing that's happening around us? What is your hope? And of course, that's the opportunity to mention to tell them our hope is in our Lord. Amen. 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 We hope that God will still provide no matter what. We hope that after all these things, you know, that God will continue to protect us. Even in this situation, even with this coronavirus. That's our hope. But our ultimate hope is this. Our ultimate hope is not in this life, but in the life to come. Our ultimate hope is our Lord Jesus Christ. What He has done on the cross, what He has given us, the forgiveness that He has given us. The sufficiency of His forgiveness, the sufficiency of, uh, of, of His blood to clean our sins. And despite of what's happening right now, with or without coronavirus, we will all go, we will all die. Amen. Amen. So better to have security in the Lord rather than in this world. Yes. yes. Revelation 21 4 says, He will wipe everything from your eyes. This is the promise of the Lord. Someday, when we are with Him, there will be no more death, no mourning or crying or pain for the old order things as possible. Now we are expecting, we are excited to see the days of the Lord to come and be with Him. No more struggle. Lord, praise God. How are you excited that they will come? Amen. I'm not saying that we should not pay attention to what's happening around us. Yes, we should. Because we are still here. But let's take this opportunity, this situation, you know, to bring the good news to other people. Amen. Rather than bringing bad news. Yes. You know, and, and, and just, and just, you know, just, just cry with them, say, ah, yeah, you're right, life is so hard. Yeah. You know what I mean? We are not here, you know, to, 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 to complain with them. We are here to give hope, to give life, because we have the Spirit of God in us. Amen.